Secretary Clinton, Chelsea Clinton, welcome to the Sunday Project and congratulations on Gutsy. It's a very inspiring series. I'm wondering though why you wanted to do this together. It's a great question because, you know, we love telling stories of inspiring women. We've done it uh, just between the two of us. We wrote a book called The Book of Gutsy Women. And when the opportunity came after the book was published to turn it into a series, we really did think it, it might provide some inspiration, uh, motivation, information uh, to a broader audience, a global audience. Uh, and so we said yes, but I have to tell you, we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into. It's been quite the journey and it's been one that I think has had a big impact on both of us personally. And we wanted it to be multi-generational. That was really important to us, to have women much younger than me and, and much older than my mom as, as part of this series. And we thought that would be, I think, kind of easier and more authentic if this was something we did together. One of the elements of it that I really love is how real and raw you both are right throughout. <laughs> And Secretary Clinton, you say in the series that one of the gutsiest things that you've ever done was to stay in your marriage. New allegations that President Clinton had an affair with a former White House intern. Sex, lies, and audio tapes. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Why was that a gutsy move? Well, because I think, um, as, as we all know, um, when you're faced with that choice, uh, the decision is right for some people to leave, and I totally respect that. And the decision is right for some people to stay under whatever circumstances they decide. Um, I had to make the choice that was right for me, and I did, and I have no regrets, but it was gutsy because I was in the center of this global you know, stage trying to make the right decision, and I had to listen to myself because everybody else had an opinion. And I think whether it's a marriage or a job or anything else in life, when you have to chart your own course and it, there is a difference of opinion and you're going to be judged one way or the other, you really have to make the decision that feels right to you. And oftentimes, you know, that requires a, a level of gutsiness. Chelsea, you would know better than anyone just how gutsy your mum is. To your eyes, what do you think is the gutsiest thing your mum's ever done? Well, certainly, you know, she just answered that question from a, a personal standpoint. And if you asked her kind of from a professional standpoint or a, a public standpoint, she would talk about running for president. And I certainly, having watched her do it twice, think that was incredibly gutsy. I am running for president of the United States. What was it like watching your mum go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump, particularly during, during those debates? She doesn't have the look. She doesn't have the stamina. I said she doesn't have the stamina. Well, as soon as he travels to 112 countries and negotiates a peace deal, a ceasefire, a release of dissidents, an opening of new... Uh, opportunities in nations around the world, or even spends 11 hours testifying in front of uh, a congressional committee, he can talk to me about stamina. Well, I was very proud. I was there for all of them. Um, and I think she certainly decisively won all of them, not only kind of with her Before the calm, Act, unflappable demeanor, four. even when he was creepily stalking her <laughs> and menacing her from the stage, but because she actually knew what she was talking about <laughs> on a substantive and a policy basis. And maybe I'm old fashioned, but I would like for my candidates for president and certainly my president to know what she or he is talking about. So <laughs> she won on the style for me, but she also won on the substance. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. <laughs> we know uh, that politics is a vicious business, particularly for women. But there's something that you say in the series, Chelsea, and I'll quote you here. You say, I don't remember a time when I wasn't aware of the hate and the whisper of violence around our family. I'm wondering what that felt like growing up in the White House. Well, thankfully, while it is true that I was always aware of it, I also always felt you know, very safe kind of with our family. And I was aware that 
that isn't how it should be. And I think that we need a wholesale rejection of this you know, in our country or in any country, because I think um, a healthy functioning democracy is incompatible with an ongoing threat of violence. Well, one of the ways that you show you both deal very effectively with hate is by having a laugh. And Secretary Clinton, you do that particularly well with the memes that exist around your legendary wardrobe of pantsuits. <laughs> so I have to ask, how many sets of pantsuits do you actually have in your wardrobe? Oh, what, <laughs> what a great question. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Ballpark. Yeah. Ballpark. Be honest. Be honest. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. Maybe 50. I don't know. 50, maybe? <laughs> A lot. A right. lot. Yeah. That, well, Secretary <laughs> Clinton and Chelsea Clinton, it's been so great having you on the Sunday Project. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's great Thank talking you with us. you. Liz, she's got a pretty interesting reason for actually wearing all of those pantsuits, right? She sure does, Rach. In fact, um, early on in her public life, what happened was she was wearing a skirt suit and a photographer, disgustingly, took an upskirt photo of her and that ended up in a lingerie ad campaign in Brazil, wow. ironically enough. And from that moment forward, Secretary Clinton made the decision, I'm doing pantsuits forever and ever. Amen. And I must say, when she says 50 pantsuits, usually when a woman comes up with the number of how many things she's got in a wardrobe, I think it's a bit like me telling my husband that I've got five pairs of shoes. <laughs>